Chester, it's like two in the morning. What are you doing? Well, I'm looking for the Northern Lights. I've heard they've been out and about lately. Wait, seriously? That's pretty awesome. Have you seen anything yet? Well, no. But there is this weird purple light in the sky. What is it? Aliens? Probably aliens. You know what? I should call the government. No, no, Chester, not aliens because those are actually the Northern Lights, and wow, that is incredible. Wait a minute, so the lights aren't just green? They can be purple too? That and then some, which maybe we should talk about that. When most people think of the Northern Lights, they think of the color green. But did you know that these beautiful lights can also appear as pink, purple, blue, red, and yellow? And not all these colors are created equally. Green is the most common one, as you probably can guess, but if you've ever been lucky enough to see purples, yellows, or pinks in the sky, you can proudly say that you have witnessed some of the rarest Northern Lights colors that we get. So what causes these different colors? Why can the Northern Lights be red or pink? Well, let's get into it. First off, we have to understand what the Northern Lights actually are in the first place. And fortunately, I made a whole video explaining that. So if you haven't seen that one yet, definitely go check that out first and then come back here. Cause having that baseline understanding is really important to understanding what's going on here. So now you've totally watched that video, right? Yeah? Okay, awesome. Once we know what the Northern Lights are, we can answer the question of what makes them change different colors. Well, there are essentially three factors that influence the different colors of the auroras. Type of gas, altitude, and the level of solar activity. So what the heck does all that mean? Let's break it down. As we now know, the auroras are caused by high energy particles from the sun slamming into the Earth's atmosphere. When these high energy particles from the sun reach our atmosphere, they collide with the elements in it at like 45 million miles per hour, which is literally impossible to conceptualize how fast that is. Our atmosphere is primarily made up of oxygen and nitrogen, so the majority of these collisions involve one of these two elements. Generally speaking, the reds and greens of the auroras come from oxygen, while the blues and purples come from nitrogen. But there's much more to it than just this, and yellow, in my opinion, is an especially fascinating color, and we'll get to why. But before we can talk about why yellow is so cool, we first have to talk about our second factor that influences the colors of the auroras, which is altitude. When the solar particles collide with elements in our atmosphere, the altitude at which this happens has a significant impact on the color being produced. For example, I just said that oxygen causes red and green colors, which when you think about it, how can the same one element cause two different colors? Well, a big factor in that is going to be altitude. The answer of why altitude causes the elements to turn different colors is a bit complicated, but in simplest terms, different altitudes are different environments. For example, the higher you go, the less oxygen there is. The concentration of the elements, like having less oxygen at higher altitudes, isn't the only thing that changes based on altitude, but it is one of the few very important factors that influences why different elements turn different colors at higher or lower altitudes. An oxygen molecule existing in a higher versus lower altitude will interact with the sun's particles very differently because different altitudes are different environments. To help you understand how this works, think about this in a real life context for a moment. The way that you would speak to someone in a super crowded room is different than the way you would speak to them in, say, a library. If you're at a party in a crowded room, you're probably going to have to raise your voice, use more gestures to get your point across, maybe lean in a little bit so they can hear you better. Whereas if you were in a library, you could kind of whisper back and forth pretty easily without having any issues. So the environment is shaping the way we are interacting with another person and the environment that's at different altitudes shapes the way that our elements interact with the sun's particles. Now, what does this look like practically in the Northern Lights? Well, oxygen colliding with the sun's particles at a relatively low altitude produces a green light. But when this happens at higher altitudes with oxygen, it produces a red light instead. 
So that's pretty interesting. But now let's talk about what makes the color yellow so special. And this brings us to our third and final variable in what makes the auroras turn different colors. And this is the level of solar activity. This is the one that I found the most interesting and I just thought it was downright cool. So let's get into it. More solar activity means more particles from the sun flying into the Earth's atmosphere. This means there are more particle collisions and therefore more light of all aurora colors being produced. When there is very high solar activity, there are tons of colors being produced all over the place. And in fact, there are enough colors being produced that they actually start to mix in the sky. Isn't that insanely interesting? It's like mixing paint, but on a cosmic level. The yellow and pink auroras result from reds, greens, and blue lights mixing together in the sky. For example, the yellow light is created from the red and green auroras mixing, just like how your TV creates a yellow color on screen by showing tiny green and red lights together. Quick side note, was I the only one as a kid who would get like super close to the TV because I like to see the red, green, and blue bars on the TV that would like make up the whole picture. But when you got really close and zoomed in, you could see like the individual colors. I thought that was like the sickest thing ever. So anyway, now let's lay out a little more clearly how these three variables create all these different colors. As I said, green light is produced with oxygen at lower altitudes typically 60 to 190 miles up in the air. Red light is produced even higher up, still with oxygen, but now between 180 and 250 miles up. Blue and purple lights come from mostly nitrogen and happen comparably low down, less than 60 miles in altitude. Yellow and pink auroras occur in periods of high solar activity where the lights are able to mix together. Now, that's all pretty interesting if you ask me, but now I wanna dive into the question of why are these elements giving light off in the first place? We've said it happens when there's the particle collision between the solar particles and the atmospheric elements, but why does this happen? When the solar particles collide with these elements, the elemental atoms are becoming excited. Excitation is a term in chemistry for when an atom moves to a higher energy state. So let's zoom in a bit here. You probably know that an atom is mostly made of protons and electrons, right? There are neutrons in there, but we're just gonna ignore those for now. Well, the electrons orbit the protons in the similar fashion that the Earth orbits the sun. The electrons all orbit at different distances too, and the further away they are from the protons or the center of the atom, the more energy that they hold. When an atom is excited, let's say a particle from the sun comes blasting in at 45 miles an hour, these electrons are bumped to a higher energy state because the particles have to absorb the impact somehow. So the way that they absorb it is by boosting their electrons to a higher energy state. Which like when you think about it is pretty badass because if something flew into us at 45 miles an hour, we would just spontaneously explode and there would be no trace of us left. So sorry not to get a little morbid there, but like it's pretty darn cool. So the particles collide and the electrons in the atmospheric elements bump up to a higher energy level to absorb the energy of the impact. But having these electrons stuck way up there isn't the best way for an atom to exist. So what goes up must come down and these electrons are gonna fall back down to their normal position. And it is right here that light is produced. You see, in order to go back to this lower energy state, the electrons have to ditch all that extra energy that they absorb during the collision. And they can't just like have it fade away. I mean, one of the absolute principles in physics is that energy can never be created or destroyed. So they have to do something with it in order to return to their neutral resting place. So how are they gonna do this? Well, light is a form of energy. And so as the electrons fall back down, they release all of that absorbed energy in the form of light. And this light is the light of the auroras. So when you think about the Northern Lights, it is so fascinating for me to think that they are essentially energy from the sun that has made its way all over to earth and now is lighting up our sky. Like that's pretty darn cool how that happens, right? So there you have it. Haver? So there you have it. I did it again. <laughs> so there you have it. Every color of the Northern Lights explained. If you like this video, please go ahead and leave a like down below. I would really appreciate it. And go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you wanna keep learning about nature and science. My name is Dina and I will see you in the next one.